So now that we have the top plate out of the clamps, what I have to do first is level the center in case things didn't get flush when we glued these two pieces together and they didn't and that's a common issue it's one of the reasons I left the blank thicker and so I'll start in the center and I'll make sure that that is smooth and even on both sides that there's no ledge or anything like that but that it's nice and smooth And then I work from the center out. And the reason I would do this is because when I book matched the top, we saw it cut this top in half down the uh, thickness and opened it up. That ended up with one side of the top having a grain that moves in the opposite direction to the other. This is normal and common. And so I'll work from the middle out on each side first to begin to roughly thickness the blank or the top. And you'll see I'm flipping it now because I'm going to be planing in the direction of the grain on one side. So I need to do that. And now to finish the rough thickness of this, I'll come across the grain, across the top. And this is just a rough thicknessing because I still want room uh, as uh, I build to uh, take it down to final dimension. And now it's time to take and mark out the shape of the body onto the body blank. And what I've done is I've made sure that it's centered on the blank. And then I'll take this fat magic marker and I'll mark the edge, the outline of the body shape. And I chose the fat marker because I want a lot of leeway when I begin to saw this out. And as a matter of fact, I will cut out on the outside of even these marks so that I have plenty of leeway to bring the blank down to the proper actual size of the body. And now I'll do the same thing to the top plate. Mark out the shape of the body. And then I'll use a jigsaw to actually cut the shape of this body out. It would be better to use a band saw, but I don't have one. And it will be a very long time, if ever, than I'll ever get one. The only way I would ever get one is if someone gave me one. Because there's no way that I could afford to buy a bandsaw. Not one the size that I would need to do this work with. So, now you see me cutting out around the horn of this instrument. When you use a jigsaw, as you try to cut curves, the blade flexes and it's not square to the top. The sides are not square to the top where it cuts. So what I do is when I have to cut curved spaces, I cut it out a little chunk at a time to kind of minimize that as much as possible. Uh, it's not going to look pretty, but it doesn't matter. It just gives me room to make sure that I can get everything nice and square in the curves and all of that. And 
And I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a little bit of a whine in the background. That'll probably be on this audio overdub. There's nothing I can do about that. That is my actual laptop. For some reason, when I play this video and narrate over top of it, because I'm doing it basically in real time, the laptop makes that noise, and there's nothing I can do. So, you might not even hear it. And now, I'll cut the top plate out and do basically the same thing. But you see, if you look, you'll see me back up a little bit with the saw and then go forward again. And what I'm doing is, because this blank, this top plate, is thin, there's not as much flex when you turn curves and corners in the uh, steel saw blade or the jigsaw blade. And I can actually back up and uh, come at it from a little bit sharper or uh, more shallow angle, whatever it is that I need in order to make those cuts. And there won't be as much of an issue with the flex in the blade. And so now I've got it cut out and I need to glue it together now so that the top and the body become one piece. And I'm going to be fairly generous with the glue. And then what I'll do is I'll put glue on the other side as well. Like I said, I'm being very generous with the glue because I want this bond to be really good. And so now it's just a matter of getting it positioned on this top properly so that the center lines of the body blank and the center line of the top plate match each other. And then what I'll do is I'll put a clamp at either end and I won't clamp down on this clamp super tight at first because I don't want it to shift too much. I need something just to hold the body in place while I put the other clamps on and then once I get the rest of the clamps on then I can tighten everything down and the top won't move. There's lots of ways to do this. Some people use little brad nails that they put in uh, like the body and cut the stuff off, cut the nail off real close to the to being flush so that it just leaves a little nub and then they you know press the, body, the top plate down on it and uh, make an impression that way when they go to uh, put it on uh, with glue the little brad nails will pop down in those little impressions and it'll stay where it's placed I've not really had any issue with clamping it down like this as long as you're careful it clamps just fine and stays where I want it to stay so but now you see I'm putting uh, some deep reach clamps in here because I want to try to make sure at least in the section where I'm going to have uh, pickups, where I'm going to have the bridge 
bolted down to it and stuff like that that in the center of the body it's glued really good as well and I've got a little piece of cut off of the top that I'm using for a call so that it will spread that clamping pressure across the body like that I'd like to have about four more of these deep reach clamps uh, but this is what I have so this is what I'm using I could have used the uh, template that I used to mark this body shape as a call and set it on top but I would rather do it this way so that I can see the edges because I want these edges to clamp down good and tight without any gaps if there are gaps there are ways to deal with that but I would much rather not have any gaps to start with that's preferred and there it is in the clamps uh, and I'll let the thing dry and then we'll be back to continue with this build uh, thank you for watching bless you I'll talk to you later